going to be quick. Whoa! Thank you! Welcome, everyone, to the Pastrana P1 Offshore Invitational, powered by Traxxas, here in beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm your host, Pat Parnell, and honored to be joined by, that's right, offshore boat racing legend Steve Curtis, and a man, I'm going to be honest, doesn't really need an introduction, Mr. Travis Pastrana. Welcome, gentlemen. Dude, yeah. glad to be here. I know this was a long time in the making. Uh, how does the, the energy feel right now for you? Dude, energy's awesome. It's <laughs> yeah. always good to be around this crew. A bunch of competitors, um, action sports, NASCAR, IndyCar, got some entertainers all here because everyone believes that they're the best at everything they do, and that's kind of what makes this Nitro Circus crew tick. You have no shortage of crazy ideas, but I want to know how was this plan hatched to have an invitational? Well, honestly, as soon as I started racing with that man over there, Miss Geico, um, all of my friends, IndyCar, NASCAR, action sports, they all said, I want to go race boats. Which brings me to vehicles. Uh, for those that are new to the sport, maybe uh, Steve, you could help us uh, understand a little bit more. Well, this is a spec class boat, so it's a fantastic boat to race. They're very, very, very close on timing, etc., etc. So, really close racing. They're V-hulls. They're about 32 foot long. They're running a single Mercury 525 big block Chevy based engine, and they couldn't run about 100 miles an hour. Got a hell of a lot of driving to do out there, so it's really going to sort the men out from the boys. Okay, now let's talk about the teams. A motley crew, indeed. Uh, maybe you could break it down for us. Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm going to start out. I mean, I'm a Red Bull guy, but I'm going to start out with Team Monster. They have. Kurt Busch, Daytona 500 winner as well as NASCAR Cup champion. Also, Ryan Villapoto, uh, one of the best motocross, supercross racers of all time. Brian Deegan, one of my biggest rivals. And you can't forget Blake Bilko Williams. This guy is known for his freestyle, but he's actually the smoothest, most meticulous driver you've ever seen. And those guys are gonna be a very tough team. But my wife in Power Plus is the fastest one on that over my all-time hero, Ricky Johnson, as well as Indy car driver, Connor Daly and Parks Bonifay. That team is gonna be a really good contender for the final. Team Pit Viper is gonna be the most fun to watch, for sure. I mean, you got Jim York, you got Greg Duffy, the only rider that's ever done a double front flip on a motorcycle, as well as the Diesel Brothers. This is gonna be a fun, fun team. And tell us about Team Black Rifle Coffee Company. When we came into this, you know, really good friends with, with JT, uh, Matt Best, all the guys at Black Rifle and said, hey, let's put together an event. You know, we're going to do this, this. They said, no, we want vets. We want, I mean, American legend Marcus Luttrell, probably the toughest guy on the face of the earth. Let's go out, have some fun, pay tribute to the guys that give us the freedom to do this race. Yeah, and an awesome amalgamation of athletes and chargers across the board. Now let's get to the course and format. What can we expect, Steve? Uh, the course is a real simple course. We're all doing left-hand bends, big long left-hand bends. It's a 1.75 mile course, um, and it's all about driving smoothly. Smooth is fast. They've got three laps. The first two laps are warm-up laps. The final lap is your timed lap. So it's how you come into that start gate and accelerate around that first bend, keep it smooth to the finish. And the winner goes through to the next round. Yeah, so you've just got two boats left. <laughs> we can't wait. We're about to get set. Uh, before we do that, we check in with the fourth member of our broadcast team, JT. Thanks, guys. These Mercury engines are screaming by as these boats hit speeds of almost 100 miles an hour. We are as close as we can possibly get thanks to Nortec, and this is a perfect day for racing. Our first matchup, none other than Team Monster Energy, piloted by Brian Deegan up against Team Pit Viper. Greg Duffy behind the wheel. Who do you love in this matchup, Travis, and why? Oh, man, you got Maryland Wrecking Crew with uh, Greg Duffy and Pit Viper, but as much as this is a battle of the freestyle motocross legends, Brian Deegan has a lot more experience. You name it, Brian has driven it. So I'm going to have to say that the monster team is going to be very, very tough for Pit Viper and Greg Duffy to overthrow. <laughs> yes, round one, we have Duffy and Deegan. You were a last-minute ad, but you're also the favorite to, to, to win this one. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been practicing my drinking uh, a lot this uh, this winter up in Maryland. That's that's about all the practice I need, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, he did pass the sobriety test this morning with flying colors. We're going to throw that out there. So we'll have to see how this plays out as we are about to get to go here in St. Pete. Here we go, coming into lap one. You got two freestyle moto icons with Brian Deegan in the Monster, as well as Greg Duffy in the Pit Viper. Deegan's charting his lap right now. This is one for the ages. <laughs> I can barely hear you, Travis. Uh, the roar of Brian Deegan uh, piloting for Monster Energy as Pit Viper by Greg Duffy. 
Greg Duffy now had the second slowest time and the good news for Monster Energy, Brian Deegan, uh, well, Monster Energy is looking like one of the fastest times. Three laps will decide as trying to get that transfer spot into round two. Really love what Duffy did. He kind of messed up on the corner, so he slowed it down to make sure that Deegan was in as much chop as possible. This is part of his strategy. I don't know if it's legal, but if you're not pushing the limits, you're not trying. Well, as with Dugan went past, he had a little bit of a chime walk on, which isn't a good thing. That'll slow him down. He's got to gather the boat back up. Like you said, Pit Viper's pushing harder now. He's probably been told by the chief referee to get moving. Final lap right now. Deegan is definitely making some ground. Going through the waves, Duffy's sabotage, I don't think is going to be enough to win this round. The clouds have parted. The sun is out. Greg Duffy, you're the first race of the day. Sadly, Brian Deegan took this one. How'd it go? Yeah, smashed him, bro. <laughs> All right, we are set. It is round one, Power Plus. Piloted by Ricky Johnson, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Piloted by Taylor Canfield, a former Navy SEAL, turned NASCAR driver, turned bodyguard for Joe Rogan. I mean, let's face it. The guy was kind of a wash-up dirt bike rider, right? Now, Ricky, it's been quite some time since you've been competing. What do you think of this whole boat race thing? <laughs> well, I did compete in a boat race once about 40 years ago. Here we go, coming into lap one, Ricky Johnson bouncing around and that Team Power Plus. Um, oh, oh, he is just bouncing. A little bit different than a whoop section. And I know that Throttle Man is not lifting. He knows that Ricky Johnson can handle it. But at the end of the day, this is the first boat that we've seen in RJ that's coming up here that has not been on the rev limiter. So are they losing too much out of the corners? And what you lose on the top speed straight away, you might not just be able to make up. And as split times come in, we'll let you know as things wind down, uh, three full laps, trying to move on to the round two, right into semis. And like, as we mentioned, we will crown a champion here today. Could this be a uh, takeaway for Black Rifle Coffee Company? You watch the boat, do you like what you see, the way that it's moving through the water there, Steve? Yeah, they're coming through. They're the only boat that's been on the rev limiter as they've hit the start finish line. So they're really coming on it early. They're one of the shortest setup so far on all these boats. It looks like Ricky Johnson picked up about a second on that lap. I do not know what the times were on the first. I'm just kind of gauging off of where they are. Ricky Johnson, though, no stranger to having to make up time, you know, with laps to come. So right now, this could be the biggest upset of the entire event. Ricky Johnson, everyone slating him to go to the finals. It's going to be tough. I mean, Ricky Johnson will be absolutely slaughtered if he doesn't get through to the next round. I, Ricky might cry. I've never seen Ricky Johnson <laughs> cry in my life. But if he lost first round, the Team Black Rifle Coffee Company. This just, just in, Ricky Johnson getting the edge, moving on to round two. I think that was good enough. Wow. Just wow. Missed it by one one hundredth of a second. You need to do your homework, first off, because you said, I think I think in our first interview, we can go back and look at it. He said, I think it's been 40 years or a long time since you've run in a race car. Now, Ricky, it's been quite some time since you've been competing. Since you've been competing. Evidently, you didn't get the memo that I won the Baja 1000 three months ago, but that's okay. Oh, that, oh, we have a champion. That's okay. <laughs> My feelings aren't hurt. You know, I've only been working for that title. Now I'm 56 and I got it, and you just blew me off, bro. Welcome back, everyone, to St. Petersburg, Florida, here for the Pastrana P1 Offshore Invitational, powered by Traxxas. We're about to get back to more racing. Before we get to that, though, we need to talk about the certification process for these guys to be allowed on the water, right? It's no easy feat. Well, without a doubt. I mean, they actually <laughs> flip a boat over in the water, and you got to figure out how to get out of it. Now, it's one thing when it kind of rolls over slowly. It's a whole other thing when the boat crashes doing 100 miles an hour, as Steve Curtis told me in our first test. All right, well, let's take a look and see how all of our competitors did in their certification. Can we go get some water my nose? I have 100% confidence in our team, Power Plus. So the way I look at it is the opposite of fire. Both of them, can, water and fire, can both kill you. So just take your time. Mr. Luttrell, Mr. Hey. Luttrell, I, I know you've been really nervous about getting in this thing. I, oh. I just want to let you know you're, you're in good hands, man. You, you're going to be all right. <laughs> Travis, did you tell him I can't swim? I can't, can't hand swim either. Oh, OK. You guys would be great. All right, we're naturals. <laughs> 
No, I don't find that fun, but oh, I'm, like, I'm like, damn it, I am going to stay in here longest that Marcus the Chow. It didn't go anything like they said it would. That's the best part about it. <laughs> I get pleasure out of seeing the nerves come out every once in a while. It was me and Marcus so many years ago as, as SEAL students, right? And now it's just kind of good to instill those nerves in someone else. My entire body is quivering, <laughs> shaking. This helmet is large. <laughs> <laughs> we got Connor Daly in there. Phenomenal driver, scared to death to do anything in the water. I never seen someone exit a boat that fast. He was out of it before it went upside down. Not fun. <laughs> Thanks for helping her, Marcus. You want to push her in again? <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen in real life. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. All right, I'm not going to lie to you folks. Uh, this was one of my favorites. Black Rifle, piloted by Marcus Luttrell. It's like, man, I came here to drive. And then the Team Pit Viper, Diesel Dave behind the wheel as we watch these two trying to get that transfer spot to round two. This is what's going to happen. Tell me, Marcus. <laughs> and it is time for that green flag. And we are underway. Oh, Marcus Luttrell comes around full drift and saves it <laughs> coming into the hot lap. Now, usually when you come into your starting lap, you want to have a big wide sweeper for the most speed. He came in full drift. This first lap is not going to be ideal, but I have to say against Diesel Dave, uh, these two are a really, really tight matchup. It's going to be an awesome race. Steve on the throttle for Team Black Rifle Coffee Company looking solid as we watch Team Pit Viper coming through for another pass. I have to say, that was a really great corner coming into their uh, first lap for Team Pit, Pit Viper. Uh, looks really good. A little wobble down the straightaway, but honestly, Diesel Dave driving a lot better than, than many people gave him credit for when he came into this. You can imagine Black Rifle Coffee Company right now, a little sour right now, and Marcus has to be making up for that loss that they just suffered between Ricky Johnson and Taylor Canfield. So trying to make up for some room and staying in the hunt for that title. You know, a lot of this comes down to the throttleman, and the throttleman has to adjust depending on how the driver, how smooth he is, how's he going. I bet Marcus looked over, because they are not lifting in Black Rifle Coffee Company. He had to have looked over and said, if you lift, there's going to be trouble after this race. Diesel Dave rounds the far corner as we are winding down oh, here in oh round one. Goodness. Oh, oh <laughs> my gosh, Marcus Luttrell. This guy is trying the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Instead of making a sweeper, he is trying to hit every buoy around the corner. It looked to me like he almost hooked it off the third boy. Well, it has turned into a beautiful day here in St. Petersburg, Florida, as we just witnessed our second round one matchup bracket. Yes! Oh, my man! Taking the cake out there, how was it? I'm crying under these shades, I've got them on, my eyes are red, the tears are streaming. I don't want anybody to see, so I'm gonna act tough and I'm gonna walk away. Our next matchup, the Sensei of Speed, Lindsey Pastrana up against Team Monster Energy driver Blake Bilko Williams. Yes, I'm not finished yet. I'm the champ. This is gonna be a battle for sure. Whoa, this is gonna be clean, this is gonna be clean. Lindsey came to win. Bilko coming in a little shallow to that corner. He's going on the straightest distance, but his throttleman actually had to lift there coming in. Um, this will be interesting. He got a little sideways before his opening lap. Did not hit the rev limiter. Bilko definitely adapted the waves better than Lindsay on lap one. Lindsay has a hard time getting out of that final corner onto the front stretch and has lost about a second on her second lap. Team Power Plus already getting one transfer spot by means of Ricky Johnson. Can they get a second here? But it definitely looks like it's leaning towards Bilko as we look at these laps. Lindsay just got into a little bit of a swap there down the straightaway, and the throttleman actually backed off down the middle of the straightaway. So she is definitely having a little bit more trouble adapting this rougher water than was expected with her extremely fast qualifying time. And I gotta say, Bilko just did a beautiful turn. Bilko smoothing it out, being one of the not only most aggressive drivers with Kevin Smith as his throttleman, but also being one of the smoothest. He is going to be a force to be reckoned with here come to the end of the show. Laser precision by Bilko, almost making it look like a day of yachting out there. 
unbelievable, uncanny ability to adapt and find his way into the sport of offshore powerboat racing as Lindsey Pastrana finishing things off. Oh, uh, if we were a little slow, it was a little more scary, it was a little bumpier. Get in, sit down, shut up, and hang on, that's how we do it. Trim down for what? I'm here with Jim York, who's most likely going to die in the next two days. Jim? Gonna live forever! My name is Jim York. I have a background and or am a semi-professional demolition derby driver, and I'm driving for Team Pit Viper. I'm Diesel Dave. We build trucks for a living. We're from Salt Lake City, Utah. Today I'll be racing for Team Pit Viper, the coolest team on the planet. My name's Heavy D. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm driving for Team Pit Viper, and I'm a professional fun haver. My name is Greg Duffy. I am from Graysonville, Maryland, and I am racing for Team Pit Viper. Double front flip. Greg Duffy, we didn't even get up. Stan Perkoski from Cape Coral, Florida. Stan, my throttle man. He's one bad dude, man. We didn't even let off yesterday. When Travis Pastrana calls you and say, hey, let's go offshore and go racing, you drop whatever you're doing and you go racing offshore with Travis Pastrana. So, I'm very excited. So the boat behind me is a 30-foot Phantom race boat. It's about a 90-mile-an-hour boat. It's got a Mercury 525 motor producing about 525 horsepower. Huh. I thought these were like 35. All right, butt fucker a little bit there. This is something that's absolutely crazy. It's gonna be fun. Don't know what these guys know. Don't know if they can or can't drive a boat. My boats have fishing holes, like fishing rod holders and, and crab lines going out of them. And uh, yeah, these, uh, these don't have any of that. And they go a lot faster too, so. Welcome back to the Travis Pastrana P1 Offshore Invitational, powered by Traxxas. While we were away, round one racing action continued to entertain here in St. Petersburg, Florida, as Team Power Plus pilot Parks Bonifé got a little loose in turn number two, allowing Black Rifle Coffee Company's Evan Hafer to steal the win. In all actuality, I got a confession. The throttle man actually drove with his right hand. I was just along for the ride. IndyCar racer Connor Daly showed his prowess on the water, defeating Team Pit Viper's Jim York in increasingly bumpy water conditions. And just like you said right before the race, you had hoped to just knock Jim out right away, and you did. Absolutely wiped the floor with his face, and I hope he, uh, you know, cries tonight. Poor guy, it's been a rough run for him, but you know what? Good run. Black Rifle Coffee Company's Matt Frazier put up a fight against Monster Energy's Ryan Villapoto. But ultimately, it was Villapoto advancing to round two. So, Matt, I mean, along with a lot of the other guys that are on the Black Rifle, he is good under pressure, um, but five world championships in CrossFit is probably not going to help you get by a multiple times Supercross and Motocross national champion. After getting used to these conditions out there on that run, you think you've kind of got a feel for it and this next one will be fast? Yeah, I think it will be. You know, I definitely had some wakes coming into this far turn. I think everybody's dealt with that today. The wind's coming in this way. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll just get a, a little bit cleaner run next time and drop a couple tents. We are setting up for a Davy and Goliath matchup. Kurt Busch in the Team Monster Energy boat up against Team Pit Viper, piloted by Heavy D of the Diesel Brothers. I have to say, I would be a bit intimidating starting out the race going up against Kurt Busch. Who does that? Who puts me Who puts me up against, I'm the slowest guy here. I, I like Heavy D's line. First lap, he goes way wide. He cuts inside, he goes way wide again. He's making as many waves that Kurt Busch has to go over as possible and gave himself a lot more room. So Kurt is going to be fighting Heavy D's wake this entire session. Very, very smooth, very wide. I think Kurt's got his hands full right now. I am shocked. Heavy D, they're both following each other's lines, so it really comes down to who's the smoothest. And I tell you what, Heavy D seems to be the smoother driver out of the two, which is absolutely shocking. But there you see Kurt Busch hitting the rev limiter sooner than any of the other monster drivers. That could be because of their wide lines. Uh, the tactics on the opening lap may be hurting both of them in the overall times. This could turn out to be a heavy upset. Pit Viper went super, super wide on that last bend. So maybe they were just trying the last lap to get a great time, but they went so wide. If they were using that as a time lap, they lost a lot of speed there. 
they're, they're all following the lines. They just don't want to get out of that wake. They just want smooth and fast, and they are doing exactly the same as the other driver, thinking that they're going to be a little bit smoother, a little bit faster than the other one. Kevin Smith and Kurt Busch are looking consistent and confident, but can Stan and Heavy D even come close? Kurt is getting everything out of that Maryland Wrecking Crew boat. The boat's name is actually Hurricane of Awesomeness. Throttled by Kevin Smith, they are going to be tough to beat, but I have to say, Heavy D it was definitely the fastest of the Pit Viper drivers so far, and if it wasn't for Kurt Busch, I would have thought that he would have been moving on. Would that be a Cat 4 hurricane of, of awesomeness? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Kurt, you went out there with confidence. You said you were glad that we've changed the direction of the track, <laughs> and then you just put up a crazy competitive time. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I feel dialed in this end, what I call turns three and four. I was ni nice and tidy. On the other end, there's the crosswind and the current that kept pushing me closer to the markers. And then when you're counter steering, that's taking away some speed. So I, I'm happy we advanced, but there's more room to improve. That's what I gotta keep doing is learning something each time out. So Kurt Busch secures Monster Energy's fourth spot in round two with a victory over Pit Viper's Heavy D. Kurt's round two competitors will be Evan Hafer, Blake Bilko Williams, Brian Deegan, Ryan Villapoto, Connor Daly, Ricky Johnson, and Marcus Luttrell. We are all set for round two racing. Before we get to that, let's get to know one of the teams, Team Power Plus. My name is Ricky Johnson from Marietta, California. I currently train military special forces in evasive driving, also a trophy truck driver in the trophy truck legend class in SCORE, and I'm racing for Power Plus down here in Florida. Parks Boniface, professional wakeboarder, originally from Lake Alfred, Florida, and I'm driving for Power Plus. Hey, I'm Lindsay Adams Hawkins Pastrana, professional skateboarder, driving for Team Power Plus today. My name is Connor Daly, 29 years old from Indianapolis, Indiana, driver in the NTT IndyCar Series, and I'm here for the Power Plus Racing Team. My name is Anthony Smith. I'm an engine builder as a profession. I'm here this weekend to race for Power Plus. <laughs> this is an absolute horrible idea. Let's take guys that never did this before, put them in a boat, and challenge all of us to see who's faster, you know? I have zero experience driving boats. I don't think I've ever even driven a dinghy. Good Baptist, job. Baptist, Baptist, yeah. Baptist. <laughs> well, I walked up to Connor in the driver's meeting and I said to him, I said, Connor, have you ever driven a boat before? Um, exactly, driven a boat zero times. Okay, next. <laughs> i never seen someone exit a boat that fast. He was out of it before it went upside down. Well, let's be honest. Nobody came here to get second or to go out the first round. I want to win. You know, if I don't win, I will be disappointed. I won't do the ugly cry, but I'm here to win. And uh, words of Ricky Carmichael, you can't win, craft someone who can. Here we go, start of round two. Brian Deegan first. Ricky Johnson. If you beat me, you're a dead man. Deegan coming out strong, had the fastest time in the beginning, the strongest overall team on that monster team. But Ricky Johnson, probably favorite, but this is going to be a battle of the Giants. Ricky Johnson comes out late on purpose. Deegan says, no, absolutely not. I'm not going to be in your wake the entire time. Spins around a 180. <laughs> Ricky goes, all right, whatever, kid. Spins around a 180 intentionally, lines up right in front of Brian Deegan. Deegan on his first time lap had to go around the outside of Ricky Johnson's wake, which Ricky was making absolutely horrible. This is typical Ricky Johnson. You talk about head games, a guy that understood the game of mental gymnastics and playing that mental mind warfare. Ricky Johnson is the chess champion. Not only is he the chess champion, Ricky Johnson is the first person to ever make pink cool in motocross. <laughs> but Deegan's going to be super, super pissed at this. He's messing up every lap. Ricky Johnson's out there. Every time Ricky Johnson's going forward, he's messing up the lines for Deegan. This is pure strategy at its best. But look, Brian cannot take the inside line. He cannot take the shortest distance because he's staying outside of Ricky's wake, which intentionally, like the whole strategy behind this, if you're not cheating, you're not Ricky Johnson. <laughs> I think they're both uh, messing with each other. 100%, but this is the beauty. Last lap, Brian Deegan. Brian Deegan got his best lap this lap. Ricky looked very smooth that lap. Ricky up by three tenths, and here comes Brian over the finish. 
Oh, Razor man. margin, Razor's margin separating Deegan and Johnson. All the mind games were out there, but Brian Deegan still pulls it off. Brian Deegan, you have eliminated Ricky Johnson and are advancing to the semifinals. Excited, man. You guys don't know, like, as a kid, I always looked up to RJ. I had his poster up on the wall. And to get to compete with him, that's pretty cool. So I, I'm just stoked to, to do that. And I know it came down, it was a close race, and it was close on time. So for us to come out on top, I'm stoked. Now I just have to beat my teammates, so this will be good. Welcome back to beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida, which is the backdrop for today's event. St. Pete is a world-class destination with hundreds of unique attractions, amazing wildlife, world-class water sports, and it sits amongst more than 35 miles of stunning St. Pete Clearwater beaches. We couldn't think of a better location for Travis Pastrana's P1 Offshore Invitational. This is the matchup that everybody wanted. Marcus Luttrell, Blake Williams, you guys have a standing rivalry over a stolen pillow? That's right, started with the pillow. Yeah, it started with a pillow and then it's still on. It started with a pillow and then I don't ever, don't worry about what he has to say. Get in the boat. Right now, this is it. Black Rifle Coffee Company versus Monster Energy. The only boat left. This is absolutely amazing. And Marcus Luttrell giving all he's got. Marcus, they just came out of it a little bit on that bend, but they seem to be on the money. I'm surprised at how well they're running with this little um, course time as they've got, but Monster Energy as consistent as normal, running flat, don't look out of control, and I think Bill goes for the hang of this. Wow. 118.16, the fastest lap time of the day, even in these conditions. Bill go shattering earlier times right now. Are you a little surprised by that, given the conditions? Yeah, they're getting better and better and better. These guys are professionals. They're the best in the world at what they do. Bill goes the most underrated driver that I've ever gone up against. I mean, when we go to X Games and they have all the drivers going go karting, Bill Coe is always the top. Scott Speed, uh, Tanner Faust, Ken Block, it doesn't matter. Bill Coe is always up top. He's always running. And the longer you give him, the better and better he gets. But I have to say, Marcus Luttrell, less than a second off of the best time of the day in a backup boat. This is an American hero. This guy has not given up, and he's still got time to take this win. I love the optimism, I love the hope, and we've got a battle ensuing right now between Marcus Luttrell, Blake, Milko Williams for Team Monster Energy. This is exactly what you want to see in a matchup like this. You want to see it come down to the wire, though the race is finishing. Wow, fastest lap of the day thus far. Holy cow. As you can see, I'm bringing the heat with my beautiful suntan. Um, what we're here to do. It's Florida, right? And you should wear sunscreen. And I think this is not gonna settle this rivalry. It's only going to push it into another gear with oh, Marcus. Was Marcus actually out there? I didn't even see him. <laughs> Evan Hafer is up against Kurt Busch in our next race. Let's take a look at Evan's team, Black Rifle Coffee Company. My name's Evan Hafer. I'm the CEO and founder of Black Rifle Coffee. I'm splitting my time between Utah and Texas. I'm driving for Black Rifle Coffee. I need you to be quiet for a second. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, so my name is Marcus Luttrell. I'm retired out of the military and I am driving for Black Rifle Coffee. My name is Matthew Fraser. I'm from Colchester, Vermont, five-time CrossFit Games champion, and I'm here driving for Black Rifle Coffee. My name's Taylor Canfield, I'm here racing for Team Black Rifle Coffee. I'm out of Houston, Texas, I race in NASCAR, so uh, Black Rifle Coffee was one of my, my good sponsors in NASCAR and they asked me to come do this event and it seemed like a lot of fun, so it wasn't a hard decision. Hi, I'm Steve Miklos, I'm from Newport Ritchie, Florida, and I'm throttling for Black Rifle Coffee Company. We're going to be going 100 plus miles an hour, and where is this? In the water. I have no experience driving high-powered offshore racing boats, so... You know, I think, I think it's gonna be up to Throttle Man to give me all it's got and, and I'll handle the rest. Usually when I drive anything, I drive it like I stole it. That is a great question. What did everybody else say? <laughs> Associated with such a brand and, and get to meet the people like Marcus and everybody else on the team, it's a high honor and I wanna make sure I do them right and we win this thing. Heat 
three, round two, semifinal berth number one. Kurt Busch for Team Monster Energy, Evan Hafer. Who do we like in this matchup, Travis, and why? I believe that Evan is the dark horse. He's the, the wild card. Evan has nothing to lose, everything to gain, and Kurt Busch thinks that he has this wrapped up. And based on what we saw in the backup level before, I think maybe it might be voting well for them. And apparently on lap one, they're dead equal. So, hey, it's all to play for on the last lap here. So if we look at the split times right now, it is anybody's ball game right now, trying to make their way into the semifinals as we will crown a champion here today in St. Petersburg for the Pastrana P1 Offshore Invitational as we watch that boat just add it to the mix. <laughs> you got a Black Rifle Coffee Company really adapting well here and showing they wanted a little bit more. A driver that no one expected to make it this far is giving Kurt a run for his money. They are neck and neck. And I tell you what, Evan in a boat that he's never driven is doing absolutely phenomenal. And I think that might catch Kurt a little bit off guard. This is absolutely amazing that Evan's able to keep it this close. But Kurt, I think, got the information that they had to pick it up, and they did. He looks absolutely phenomenal. He is the class of this field, and he will go on to the next round. We can roll down into the first set of corners, and it's bouncing. It's out of the air. My head's bobbing. I'm like, no, 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 go back, go back. <laughs> and so just keeping the boat consistent and me cleaning up my line. With conditions intensifying out there, uh, safe to say it's not that comfortable. I got to ask, what is it like when things are like this out there? Well, it's not crazy bad. What it does is upset the boat. If it was flat, calm, the boat would carve through the water exactly straight. When it's moving around like that, the whole thing's moving, and you have to react to that as a driver and as a throttle man. And then that's when you're really getting some teamwork together. Well, oh, absolutely. And motocross, you get a lot of arm pump. Same thing that kind of happens. I actually got the tennis elbow and NASCAR. And then out in the boats, I mean, beyond the whiplash and everything that you get when you hit the really hard waves, this V-bottom boats are going back and forth. These guys are holding on like their life depends on it because it does. Thanks, guys. Right now, we check in with Dr. G to learn about whiplash in this Powered Out Recovery Science Moment. Many of you have been in a boat, you know that sometimes those things can go really fast and it can get really bumpy. Man, the G's that these boats are pulling can cause a lot of damage when that head whips forward and it whips backward. That causes spasm. Spasm can cause inflammation and then inflammation can cause pain. That's where PowerDot comes in. It can help relieve the spasms and help diminish the inflammation in your neck, both at the base of your skull and in the front of your neck. So good luck out there to everybody. Use that power dot. It'll help diminish your inflammation. Take it away, guys. Welcome back to Travis Pastrana's P1 Offshore Invitational, powered by Traxxas. We're down to the last race in round two to determine our semifinalists. But before we head out on the water, here's a quick look at Team Monster Energy. I'm Ryan Villapoto, and I'm racing for Team Monster. I'm from Newport Beach, California, and I'm an ex-Supercross motocross racer, and we're here in Tampa Bay racing speedboats. What's up, I'm Brian Deegan from Temecula, California. You freestyle motocross, race off-road trucks, rallycross, many different things, and uh, the Team Monster Energy, the winning team. What's up, this is Bilko Blake Williams, freestyle motocross rider from Australia, and I'm here for Team Monster. I'm Kurt Busch from Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, NASCAR driver, NASCAR champion, Daytona 500 winner, and buddies with Pastrana, but I'm driving for Team Monster this weekend. My name is Kevin Smith. I am the throttle man for the Monster Energy team this weekend, and uh, we run Pro Stock D. I'm pretty nervous. I don't have any idea whether these guys have ever driven a boat before. I mean, our motorcycles, you know, you'll do 68-ish, you know, never on the water, 100's really fast, so. I have never gone 100 miles an hour in a boat. Maybe 60, maybe 70. This whole deal is, is way out of my normal realm. I don't swim very well, and I'm not good with cold water, so I plan on staying in the boat during the competition. We're looking good. The boat looks fast. Those other guys look slow. I'm excited, but kind of nervous, and I think the freestyle motocross mentality is, you just don't think about it. You just do it, and that's just the way you gotta do it, right? Be on the lookout for us, because we're going to the top. This is gonna be absolutely awesome. You have IndyCar versus Moto. 
You have the Maryland Wrecking Crew versus the Power Plus. This is going to be all out, but I tell you what, that um, they don't have quite the prop on that Power Plus team. They seem to be bogging down in the corners. A raucous battle royale of RPMs as Ryan Villapoto for Team Monster Energy up against Connor Daly for Team Power Plus. A berth into the semifinals at stake here as both boats dealing with some very challenging conditions. This wind is just continuing to get that much harder for all these drivers. It's building and building with white capping here, constant white caps getting difficult. And I think Connor's got out there. Filippoto is too close. He should have been a little bit more backed up. That might give him a bit of a disadvantage. And when we're only talking tenths of a second difference in speed, that could be the difference between winning and losing this event. Connor was almost even on that lap, and this is going to be a dead heat. I know that Indy does not want to get beat by Moto, but right now, for some ice advice, what do you think? Right now, the wind is picking up and things are changing. That means the water is going to get rougher, the race is going to get tougher. So you got to bear down and go bare knuckle on this one. And time's coming in right now. We're at a dead even. What do you take when we look at these split times right here? This is unbelievable. They are exactly 119.41, both boats. Both boats to the hundredth of a second. We will see this last lap could be the deciding factor on who goes on to the next one. And Connor Daly looks like he's getting better and better as this goes on. I feel like with the Power Plus boat, they have more opportunity to make it work. Whereas the Monster Boat and the BRCC, they're just trying to take the shortest distance and use that rev lever down the straightaway. And there you have it, the winning team, Villapoto, pulling off a win here, like he's accustomed to doing. Back-to-back -back wins, knocking Power Plus out of the race entirely. How was that one? Oh, man, it was awesome. It was good to get back-to-back -back, uh, runs out there, just get a little more familiar with the boat, the conditions. Do the same thing, get out there, run some uh, clean race, some good laps, man. Just looking forward to it. Awesome. Back up to you guys. Thanks, JT. The semifinals are next. Before we get to that, let's take a look at a little fun we got to have at the Traxxas RC course earlier. There we go. And as the sun sets here in St. Petersburg, Florida, we are set. Four teams, one track, and a one champion will roll away Traxxas, RC Invitational. A first, a first, and a chance for supremacy in the RC world. Never before have bragging rights been this important in the sport of RC. It's race time. It's a bunch of athletes that like driving anything, and it's going to get crazy. He races a team. Whoever wins out of that team goes to the final to represent that team. Jeez, honestly, I think the two of the right of me winning. take it way more serious. <laughs> I got 20 bucks. 20 bucks on 20 bucks. All right, well, no, to help me, to help me oh, to get yeah. to victory. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not competitive at all. <laughs> all right, so right, right now we got Ryan Villapoto out to a pretty good lead. Uh, Kurt, which one are you? All right, Kurt's in second. Oh, uh, who's Dale? Dale's horrible. Uh, Deegan's upside down again. But, you know, he's a freestyler, so it totally makes sense. Oh, front flip, perfect. Way to go, Kurt. You almost had five flawless laps. Have you done this before? Trying to keep all four tires on the ground. And uh, maybe I did it when I was a kid, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kurt Busch going to the finals. Ladies and gentlemen, back up to you guys. Everybody good? We're about ready. I'm going to win this one for sure. Peter! Peter! Stop it! Come on, come on, come on. Black Rival's gonna go two for two, ladies and gentlemen. You literally were upside down for 10 minutes. <laughs> no, like, I, I will lap you though, don't worry about it. All right, am I, have I lapped you yet? I have lapped hey, almost the up. entire field. I am now lapped the entire field. Whoa! <laughs> Two in a row, two in a row. The black rifle, black rifle, rifle truck. It's, it's, no, it's number one. You can't, you can't go wrong with number one. So. I think we got Honey Dick. I don't think he actually won. He just talked the whole time. And he was like, you know what, guys? I love winning. It's the best. It's awesome. It's like, wait a second. I, know one thing. I thought the thing was upside down half the time. I, I, I predict none of us really do this, so it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess.
Hey, lucky this guy can shoot a rifle because he can't drive an RC car. I don't even know which one was mine. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah, Not even who, close. who ended up winning that one? Uh, Matt Brown. I don't think I won, I just didn't lose. Yeah, the last two races, though, there seems to be some steep competition. What are you doing in this final? Uh, I'm going to take the tortoise route, or I'm going to step on someone else's car before they start. I think we took a solid second and third. Car if you win? But basically, second, third, and fourth, we're all right there having a good time. Rob, Mr. Mr. Ice iced us all. Holy cow, you're coming in to coach all these guys in voting, and you take the win of the heat heading to the final for the RC race. They gave me that one. They all crashed and I came in and just cleaned it out. I love it. Hey, I had no yeah, idea I, I could that. actually drive one of these things. And now, there you go. now, after seeing those first two though, you got some stiff competition. How are you gonna pull this one off? Yeah, well, you gotta pin it to win it, so we're here to go. You know, like, all it is is, you know, stay afloat and everybody else crashes and you enjoy winning. That's what I just did. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> folks. Talent involved, it's just luck. <laughs> Let's head to the final. Right now, it's all about RC racing, as our focus is set on the course. Kurt Busch, Rob Van Winkle, Matt Frazier, and Travis Pastrana here in the race for RC Supremacy, the Traxxas RC Invitational here in St. Petersburg. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not gonna make any accusations, but I just saw two, two other players reposition themselves, also holding controllers. I think we may have some decoys on the track, but uh, we're not going to tell anybody because if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. And a raucous roar from the crowd as we are about to drop the flag and start the race. Three, two, one, this go. is the finals! The Traxxas RC Invitational, and right out of the gate, it looks like Power Plus, Black Rifle Coffee Company, lagging way behind. And Pit Viper, Monster Energy trying to find their form. Monster Energy gutted! Can't clear the gap, but look at the style of Power Plus. And your call, Parks Bonape, Travis Strano looking solid, cornering beautifully. He was actually in my heat race earlier, and I saw the consistency, how much he wanted to stay on all four tires. I'm gonna put my money on Travis, although he also got Kurt Busch, can't rule him. Pastrana looks unstoppable. The rest of the field confused, trying to do 50-50 grinds, and skate tricks, if you will. The main event here in St. Petersburg in Pastrana for Power Plus. Oh! And we've got, wow, one car out of the mix. Pastrana is gonna have to find his way back into the race as his car is off course. And Pastrana taking matters into his own hands as he finds his car back on course. And look, nothing can stop Pastrana at this point. Come on! No, this is Dale, man. You can't stop Dale. You can't stop Dale. He's got the eye in the prize, and he sees that top spot as no one close. This is a this is a runaway race right from the get-go. Pastrana knew what he had to do, got out in the hole shot, got out in front of the pack, and the rest of the pack just a, a complete, utter nightmare right now, a mess. Hey, these are a lot of fun. I'm gonna buy these. You know, man. <laughs> They're almost indestructible. Hey. Who won? Trev. No, he didn't. He did. He cheated. I knew it. Win. <laughs> Does he ever lose? <laughs> and Team Power Plus, if this is a foreshadow to the race, things are boding well for Team Power Plus as they take the Traxxas RC Invitational, the first of its kind here in St. Petersburg. What a day. <laughs> Welcome back to the Travis Pastrana P1 Offshore Invitational, powered by Traxxas. It's been a crazy day of offshore boat racing, and as we make our way into the semifinals, we find four Monster Energy athletes all vying for a finals berth. Now, all four teammates can't compete against each other in the same Monster Energy P1 boat. So a little Rochambeau has gone down between the Monster teammates to see who drives what. In semifinal number one, it was Brian Deegan driving the Monster Energy boat to victory against Blake Bilko Williams in the Power Plus boat. We never expected two of the same team to race against each other, let alone four. The final four are all Monster athletes. So what that came down to is we had to decide who took a different boat 
Brian Deegan, Blake Boko Williams, Rock, Paper, Scissors, Deegan won, and Deegan got the win. Deegan was great. Bilko was great, but I think it was a boat. That must have been the worst rock, paper, scissors of his life. NASCAR legend Kurt Busch won two out of three Rochambeaus to stick motocross legend Ryan Villapoto in a brand new boat with a new throttleman for semifinal number two. Ryan Villapoto, and right? I'll tell you what, <laughs> Villapoto taking down Kurt Busch in the semifinal. I mean, Ricky Johnson going out early. You got Brian Deegan making it to the final, but I tell you what, Villapoto, uh, what Kevin said, was the best driver he's ever had to jump in on his first couple laps, and he is proving that he is a potential offshore powerboat champion in the making. And permission to get critical here, Steve. Uh, in the drivers, any any weaknesses? I don't see any right now. And you got two motocrosses in the final. So, you know, it's anyone's game. I think ice advice right now would say pin it to win it. And so it comes down to the final here in St. Pete. Brian Deegan versus Ryan Villapoto. Two legendary motocross riders about to do battle here in power boats. And to make the final even more interesting, the monster boat is experiencing technical difficulties and the sun has disappeared behind the clouds. The gladiators have definitely entered the arena. So quick, your, your favorite pick, go. You know what, I gotta say, I had no idea. I mean, this is so crazy that they're in boats that they haven't been to. You got the green boat out there. We know it's fast, we know it accelerates well. Um, you got the white boat out there. Got a lot of top speed, the weather's coming down. I, I, I don't know how to call it, I don't know how to call it. Where are you leaning? You, you know, I, I have to say that Brian Deegan, if it had gotten rougher, would have been the favorite. This is a wheelman, this is a guy that's driven everything, but Villapoto, from the moment he stepped foot in that Monster Energy boat, he was a force to be reckoned with. He adapted to boat racing like a fish in water, and I think it's gonna be Villapoto all the way. We have our first ever champion here at the Pastrana P1 Offshore Invitational. None other than Ryan Villapoto. We talked about that steely focus. Uh, I don't know, seemed to work, right? <laughs> Ryan came here with one thing in mind to win. Focus from day one, knew exactly what he wanted to do. Did a fantastic job, got in a new boat, still went out there in a 119.2. Incredible, deserved to win. Outstanding. Yeah, and we, we should make note of all the competitors in all the brackets. I mean, obviously Brian Deegan making it to the finals, but he had, he actually had some challengers all the way through, right? No, it just goes yeah. to show you how great of all around drivers, guys like Brian Deegan, guys like Ricky Johnson, uh, did absolutely amazing. But at the end of the day, the best driver from the start was Ryan Villapoto, and he came away the champion. All right, well, our champion is with none other than JT down in the pits, JT. Ryan Villapoto out of nowhere pulling the, 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 the number one. You're getting the trophy. How do you feel as your first P1 victory? Oh, it's awesome, dude. It's uh, That was actually the most fair way to do it, switching actual, actually both boats. Um, I know we had some some dif difficulties with, with problems with boats and things like that, but we all made it work. Everybody was uh, a true sport in this thing, and, and we did some rock, paper, scissors, and, you know, it's happening, and, but it was awesome. It, it was rad. Well, we thank you for coming. Let's head over the podium and get your award. On behalf of Steve Curtis, Travis Pastrana, JT, and our entire production team, I'm Pat Parnell saying good night here from St. Pete. We will see you next time at the next Pastrana P1 Offshore Invitational powered by Traxxas. Have a good night. All right, we are at the Traxxas Pond Skimming Contest where Travis Pastrana and Vanilla Ice are gonna try and run these things across the water. So what you're seeing right here is one of Traxxas's top models. It has 1,650 horsepower to the wheels and these specially designed sand tires that apparently also work on water, almost like a timber sled. So we're gonna see how exactly this is possible. I think the rule is if you drive it out on the water and it don't make it back, you gotta go get it. So I really don't want to remote right now. They're probably gonna get zero out of four back out of the water. So 
Does I that mean, mean they have to go get them? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you sink it, you gotta go fit, find it. <laughs> All right, as we're getting information from Traxxas, it seems they are going to hit this water dead on. And now they are supposed to reach one of the buoys, conduct a full 180 degree turn, and get back to the beach. Has anyone given you any instruction on how this is supposed to work? No! If you have instruction, it's not a nitro event, JT. We should know that. Do you believe that you'll be able to turn once in the water? Of course. I think physics is against him in this one, but we're going to see how this plays out. <laughs> actually making this work they're still they're coming around this thing is actually turning I cannot believe it he is coming in hot oh, and we've sunk <laughs> two vehicles Travis is barely makes it 10 feet into the water <laughs> <laughs> Travis entering the water to save his vehicle! <laughs> it was only about making it back to land! Winner! Thank you. <laughs> Travis Pastrana taking the goal from a technicality, being the only one to have his vehicle make it back to the sand. All right. Travis taking another round in his. Oh, it looks like he may have it. Rounding the buoy. Slow turn, slow turn. Keep the power, keep the power. He is passing the middle. Oh, 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 oh. He's staying on top of the water. We seem to have seven. Let's pull this off. There's no way this is physically possible. Yeah!